I wouldn't say I've had any great particular eureka moments. We've more been dispelling some of the myths and legends of flavour delivery that were out there. Chewing gum loses its aroma when you eat it. That would be a classic one. Aroma are the molecules that you sense in your nose. So take fruits, they'll be sweet, they'll have some acid component, but it's the aroma that makes the difference between the apple, the pear, the pineapple. As you sniff, the aroma molecules or the odour molecules go up into your nose, that's where they're detected. When you eat foods, as you chew, the chewing action pumps aroma compounds through into the throat, those then pass up into your nose and then your brain sticks all the signals together and tries to work out whether it's a good signal or a bad signal. I'd refer to this as the Atmospheric Pressure Chemical Ionisation Mass Spectrometer. It's effectively a device for sampling aromas or odours in real time. We get the panellists to come in, rest their nostril delicately on the tube, so it's just guiding their breath past the end of the sampling line. Then we would just get them to place food in their mouth and typically eat it as they would normally do. The aroma passes down through the middle of this heated line through into the heart of the ionisation region where the compounds become charged. This gets the compounds all excited and we can then take them through to the detector and measure the individual compounds that are in the gas phase. And if that gas phase is from our nose, then we can measure the aroma in our nose as we're eating and drinking just by the action of breathing in, breathing out. Once the charged compounds go into the analyzer, they're separated based on their molecular weight. The signals are recorded by the instrument, taken through to the computer, and there we can display them graphically. When we were doing the chewing gum analysis, we could see quite quickly the results on screen that rather than the aroma, gradually increasing, reaching a maximum and then declining, it basically went up, reached a plateau and stayed pretty steady. The problem with chewing gum is it actually runs out of sugars. So as you go through the eating process itself, the sugars wash out of the chewing gum, we sense them in our mouths, but ultimately after about five minutes, most of the sugars have gone. And if we haven't got the sugars to go along with the aroma, then we don't experience the aroma in the same way. And you know that when you take a piece of chewing gum out after you've been chewing it and you stick it under the bench or under a chair, it goes absolutely rock hard. That's because all of the compounds that help make it soft, the sugars have been washed out and now it's back to just its basic hard gum state. You don't necessarily need to be an expert at this. It's simply eating, drinking, breathing. Uh, for me, I have to use my left nostril because my right one doesn't work so well. I think too many fights when I was a kid, that kind of thing. Most of our panellists are students because that's what you mostly have at universities. I think it's a good piece of machinery, it does its job. and I, I kind of like its Heath Robinson kind of appearance. It has a certain, um, I don't know, a, qu a quality in its low quality, if you know what I mean.